Okay, that's not where this tire belongs. That tire belongs over here. But anyway, here's why you should always buy a straight axle trailer. Never buy a drop axle trailer. Take a look underneath here. See right now, all I gotta do is take the tire off and I can get home. On a drop axle trailer, the first thing that hits the ground while you're driving is your U-bolts. So it'll clean your U-bolts off and the axle will come out from underneath the trailer unless you catch it immediately. And then you have to have a spare or some crazy chain rigging to pop, prop the axle up. With a straight axle trailer, you can get her home on two tires if you have to. Just keep taking tires off. And I might have to because there's metal sticking out of this tire. I don't know what I ran into, but... I might pick something up on the highway and I've got pieces of the pieces of the old tire stuck in the new tire in the good tire so let's see if I can get home hey I did make it home got two new tires on there got my cement tank all on there now we're gonna unload it problem is my tractor's not big enough most likely I'm gonna try to lift it it's probably not gonna pick it up so now I'll slide it off the tilt bed Oh, it'll almost lift it. Almost. But if I drive out, I think I think it's gonna tip the tractor over if I drive out from underneath that, so I guess we'll have to slide it. Well if you said take the bucket off, that might work. That did not work. We're gonna have to slide it. This is an excellent example of why you should buy a tilt bed. Gives you more options. I took the fenders off because I figured if something happened, I couldn't smash them if they weren't there. Since we're talking about trailers, let's talk about this trailer. Uh, this is a 10,000 pound trailer. Anything 10,000 pounds or less in the way of trailers is gonna be driven by price. So that means buyer beware on these lighter trailers. I, I can't speak to brands. Brands are always changing hands. So you really have to be careful when you buy a trailer because nobody seems to care about quality. Everybody only cares about the price and that's driven the price down and there is no quality on these lighter trailers. But this has been a good trailer. It's a hull, but it's a 2011 so uh, I don't know what that means today, but anyhow, this trailer is no accident. This is a very specific trailer, and it's things that I learned the hard way, so let's take a look at them. Okay, first up, there's no headache rack. You need fake pockets in the front so you can have a headache rack, but there are times when you want to have a vehicle stick out past the front of the trailer, or you want to have a winch mounted in front of the trailer, or you may want to stick a 22 foot piece of something and utilize this area in the tongue so you don't want to have a permanent welded on headache rack okay next up you want to have fenders that come off if you have a trailer to haul equipment on and cars on it's probably going to have fenders because the deck over trailer is too tall so you want to have a trailer that you can pop the fenders off reasons you want to be able to do this. If you have a hard door that won't open, you can take the fender off. If you're worried about smashing something, you can take the fender off. If you can come in here with a forklift time, that's no problem. You can maybe haul something that's a little bit too wide, because you can take the fender off. If you really need to, you can take the fender off, you can take the tires off, and you can get a forklift. 
wherever you need to here at the center of the trail. Very important feature if you're going to spend the money. The next feature, a straight flat deck. Some of these trailers you can get with a little bit of a dovetail and that works good for hauling low to the ground cars but the problem with that is it limits you on hauling long material and the end of the trailer is always dragging on the ground. When you have the straight trailer, the edge of the trailer clears and you can overcome the part about loading a low car. All you have to do is set a block of wood, let's say a chunk of a 2x12 or a piece of a 2x6 in this area. That'll get the nose of the car up before it gets to the trailer and you don't have any trouble. All it takes is a board. Next thing to think of, next thing to think about, steel deck. I like having a steel deck. I can haul strange things on it. I don't have to worry about blowing through the deck. It's always the same weight. It doesn't get soggy and gain weight on you. And it allows things to slide off the trailer. A lot of times I'm hauling something that doesn't have wheels, a large piece of equipment, a, uh, like a lathe or a milling machine, or like we saw before, a big piece of cement, it'll just slide right off. Maybe you can't see this big dent, but there's a giant dent here in the trailer. That was from loading an excavator that the track had blown off. I only had one track to utilize. I ended up gouging the final drive sprocket into the trailer. If this would have been wood, I would have blown right through the trailer and would have made a bad day a lot worse. Now all I have is a dent to worry about. You absolutely want LED lights. I don't know if you can even get a trailer without LED lights, but if you do, you're going to have nothing but trouble. I've got all my trailers converted to LED. I don't have any trouble with the lights anymore. You also want to get a tilt bed. If you're going to spend the money on a trailer of this size, get a tilt bed. You can put a winch on here, winch broken stuff on, you can winch, uh, you can slide things on the trailer being a tilt bed. And there's, there's different options for the tilt bed, but I think the best option is a manual pump because this trailer can sit here in the field for a year, this pump still works. This trailer utilizes a jack out of a engine crane. So this is an off the shelf eight ton ram for an engine crane. So I can pull two pins, I can change the whole hydraulic system if it ever fails. Now you don't want a gravity only tilt trailer. Because that limits you if something doesn't run, you have to move what's on the trailer to get the tilt. So you want something, you want some way that you can tilt the trailer whenever you need to. Like I said before, do not buy a trailer of any type unless it has a straight axle. And see, being a tilt bed, you've got a built-in jack for the front axle. All you have to do is tilt the bed up, your front axle is off the ground. If you want to jack up the back axle, just keep going. See, I've got the back of the trailer rammed into the ground, and I've got both, I've got both tires off the ground. The jack's built in. talk about the jack. You want to have a jack that's very sturdy and not here in the tongue. A jack here in the tongue is terrible because the tailgate of your truck will hit it and the handle goes this way and they're a pain and they're not that strong as far as the trailer uh, like if you unload the trailer if you unhook the trailer with uh, something heavy on it. They're just a terrible they're terrible design because this this little piece of metal right here this little piece of metal right here is all that holds that 
Jack from getting pushed in or out, forward or backward. So it'll just bend the tongue of the trailer. You want a jack that's sturdy and mounted on the trailer. And you want a handle that turns this way. Because if you're going down the road, this handle will not wind itself. A handle that goes like this, going down the road, will turn itself in and out. It's a terrible design. If you're going to use nylon straps to tie your equipment down, this is the kind of strap to get. You want the kind that has a chunk of chain included on the strap. The main problem with that is when you buy these, most of the time, there's a piece of uh, webbing from here to the end of the chain that's like a foot or two feet long. It makes them completely worthless to use to tie equipment down. So what you want to do is find these little, you want to find these little brackets. It's just a, a clevis, basically, that goes around the bolt and directly to the chain. You can get them on Amazon. Truck and Tow has them. I suppose you can make it. But anyway, that shortens up your chain. And I'm going to show you why this is, a, this is important that you use a piece of chain. Most trailers have stake pockets. So to hook to a stake pocket with this, I can go down, I can come back up through. Now, if this strap loosens up, nothing happens. It's still attached. It's not gonna fly off. It's not gonna unhook itself because the weight is holding it down. That gives you a chance to either retighten your straps or you know, these trailers will flex if you go over uneven terrain. The trailer itself will flex, and you can watch your tight strap loosen up a little bit momentarily while the trailer is deflecting. And if that happens, and your strap's like this, and you hit a little bit of a bump, or you're hauling something that has suspension, and you hit a bump and that thing falls off, your strap's gone. Not only are you going to be dragging it down the road, but if the strap is gone, there's a 0% chance it's going to hold the equipment on the trailer. Even if, even if your strap's loose and it's still attached, it's gonna hold your equipment on the trailer if it has to. Now you might say, well, why don't you just use chains and binders well that's also a very good option but to the best of my knowledge if you're hauling equipment that weighs less than 10,000 pounds it's perfectly fine to use nylon straps of an appropriate rating you get over 10,000 pounds you're required to use chains and binders
the other thing here is see there's nothing there's no webbing on this end and there's no webbing on this end that's going to chafe anything so in my opinion i've used every type of nylon strap that there is and this is the only way to go it's the most versatile it's the safest and it's the most likely to stay attached so that's all i use If you haul cars at all, it's well worth buying one of these style ends for your strap. This is for GMs, this is for imports, this is for Fords. So you're gonna find that this works for all kinds of stuff. I use this to haul equipment, I use it to haul cars. Almost every time I haul something on this trailer, I'm using this strap. It's very versatile very glad I bought it. I highly recommend getting this this style. Even if you don't get the three, if you don't get the three, at least get one that has this style hook on it. Very handy. Let me show you. See right here in the front of this tractor? You just come up right like that. Done. If all I had was this hole, yeah, you, know, you can get into a hole just anywhere you can jam this thing. You can hook it something like that. Very versatile. All right, back to trailer tires. Trailer tires are junk. You can't buy a trailer tire that isn't junk. They're all imports. They're all garbage. I have nothing but trouble with trailer tires. I never have trouble with truck tires. So these are 15 inch rims. They make a, 15, a 16 inch rim that'll bolt in this hub. So next time I need tires, I'm going to buy 16 inch rims for this trailer and I'm going to put a load range E truck tire on here. I bet my problems will go away. So I suggest that if you're having trailer tire trouble to try that. Now the truck tire is going to be about an inch taller but uh, half of that it's only going to be a, it's only going to raise the trailer about a half an inch. I don't think that's going to hurt me any. And I am tired of buying junk. It's the same problem as the trailers as far as quality. Price drives the market for these tires. So if the only thing you care about is price and you do not care about quality, which evidently nobody cares about quality, this is what you get. You can't buy anything but junk. I've had them fly apart for seemingly no reason along the road quite frequently. They wear out, too, they wear out prematurely. The bands in them will break and the tire will start to turn into a donut. They're just junk. Okay, let's talk about the breakaway. In my state, you have to have a breakaway. It has to be inspected once a year by a, a certified inspection station. This is the kind to get, I don't know about this brand, but this type anyway. It'll light up here to tell you that it's charging, which is part of the inspection. And I can push this button and a green light will light up and tell me that the trailer's charged makes your inspection station very happy and you can keep an eye on it yourself you can tell that it's working all the time you don't have to go get a meter it's not some magical black box that you have no idea what's going on with now you're supposed to have your breakaway hooked to something that isn't hooked to the hitch and that's not the safety chain so uh, you just end up using your imagination a lot of guys do this hook it right to the safety chain uh, sometimes that's going to be fine. Sometimes DOT will give you a hard time about that. So, you know, get creative. Hook it to the frame of the truck or something if you really want to be uh, particular about it. Your safety chains. How many times have you seen somebody driving down the road, dragging their safety chains, making a bunch of sparks, looking like an idiot, wearing through the chain? You don't have to do that. If the chain's too long, Just give it a couple of twists. The chain will shorten itself up. Problem solved. Also, you want to cross. You want to cross your safety chains. The idea behind that is, if the ball comes off, the chain will be able to catch the tongue of the trailer and sort of gouge into the ground. I, I don't know. I've, the only time I've ever had safety chains maybe save the day, the whole back of the trailer broke off. So these were attached to nothing. So I don't have any personal experience 
of what happens when you trailer unhooks. Hopefully I never do, but you never know, so I'm gonna keep hooking the safety chains up anyway. Uh, you can do whatever you want to with wiring. I changed all the trailers that I have to this style 7RV blade because it's seemingly the industry standard. That way I don't have to mess around with adapters. It's just everything's the same. All the trucks have the same plug on them. That uh, makes your life pretty easy. If you're like me and you have to keep your trailers outside, keep a little oil or something on here to keep it cr from corroding, and get one of these little uh, flapper things. Uh, it's just a place to put your trailer plug. And if you mount it to where the rain doesn't fall in it, it keeps your plug from rusting up. Because the number one, I mean the first place your trailer wiring is going to fail is in the plug. It's the, it's the weakest, most permeable to moisture area. So anyway, that's some things I've learned about trailers over the years. Uh, but seriously, a straight axle trailer. You can carry a spare and you can feel that you're being safe. You can feel you're being prepared. But if you lose a tire and the axle comes out from underneath the trailer because the bottom of the U-bolt got worn off in the road, which will happen very quickly, or like in my case yesterday, I lost two trailer tires. I was empty, so the one did get me to the tire shop, but I needed to replace two tires. So in a case like that, you can still get home if you have a straight axle. You can run an empty trailer home on one axle if you have to. So anyway, thanks for watching.